A silver breakfast and plus TV Africa. And uh, we're looking at the second topic of conversation here in, in 10, 15 minutes. But maybe this might just be a plus and a solution to all of the issues of lack of revenue and no funds. Niger and other African countries may benefit from a donor assisted funding by OPEC for the international development. It may be recalled that OPEC funded or fund had in July announced that. Its first financial bonds in the global markets, amounting to $1 billion, could be issued this year. Speaking on the sidelines of Islamic Development Bank Group, a uh, meeting recently, the Director General of uh, the OFID, Abdullahi Makafi, was quoted as saying that the fund could issue low interest bonds following its 2021 high credit rating and is only waiting for international markets to stabilize. Now, since its establishment, the fund has been providing development assistance in 125 countries with a total financial cost of $190 billion and a capital of about $7.5 billion. Now, records show that about 50% of financing provided by funds in African countries including the Arab countries in North Africa and Sudan. Funds have also been made available to other Arab countries, the Caribbean, Eastern Europe and Asian regions. The fund targets the transport, health and education and energy sector, which are among the important sectors in target regions and countries, in addition to the agriculture and water sectors. Now, according to the OFID boss, more than $1 billion were spent in the health-related sectors during the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic. Currently, the fund does not intend to increase its capital to members' subscription. Uh, we have uh, Muktak Mohammed joining the conversation as a developmental economist. Muktak, thank you so much for being part of the show. Okay. Yeah, good morning. Yes, so with this development, African countries, including Nigeria, to benefit from that, do you think that this might just be a plus for us and for our economy, uh, maybe going ahead to solve some of the issues that we might be faced with? Well, um, any money to our economy is a plus for us uh, as a nation, especially with uh, what we're going through economically. Uh, but again, it's one thing to have the money, it's another thing to deploy the money to do the right things that this money are meant for. I think that's a challenge with Nigeria. If you look at it, it's not that the countries, it's not that we're not having money. Uh, sometimes the challenges has been um, how do we dispose this fund into critical sectors and, and putting in the structures that will make this result be visible to all, not uh, the more you see, the less you understand. So for me, it's not having money that's an issue. Is are we going to really deploy those money into those sectors that um, um, OPEC nations are trying trying to do? Like now, at the moment, we have a big challenge, which we should be looking at technologically way of solving it, even if the government are begin to look at deploying um, militants to guide the pipeline. What technology can we use to guide our pipeline? Can this money be channeled towards those parts so that we can increase our revenue? So those are part of the things that I think government should be looking at, not just really looking at, oh, these funds are coming. Or oh, are we just going to put it there in our, in our account in our uh, to boost our foreign reserve? Or are we going to use it for infrastructural development, which is key to the development of Nigeria economy? Well, so what can, you know, an economy as Nigeria that over time has been complained by, uh, you know, OPEC itself saying we do not meet the quota. And that has also been responsible for, you know, our earnings, shortfalls on our earnings. That's on the one hand. And also the issue of oil theft is also another one. Uh, what are your thoughts now? Not meeting our quota is uh, as regard of the oil theft that is happening in the Niger Delta. And like I said, the government have not been proactive. Before we used to say about militancy, now we've graduated from militancy to oil theft. And oil theft is not easy to be done without the help of the rich and mighty. And is it that, is it that the government does not have the political will? If you listen to what um, the, um, uh, um, the Pengasin said over the weekend, they said that uh, Oil itself is being collaborated by every sector of the Nigeria, the security apparatus, the oil companies, 
they, they, I mean, a lot of people are involved in oil theft. And so that has also uh, bring down our revenue. And uh, you can see we're struggling to meet about two to um, two, two, two billion barrel. Now we have moved to about 900. And it's, it's sad, especially when you look at the price of crude oil by, by our, our, um, our own, um, our own peg, we pegged it at about seventy dollars per barrel, and it's doing about uh, nine. Now it's gone to ninety dollars. Has done one hundred dollars. Yet we are not benefiting from it. The FNPC have not been able to remit anything to the federation account. So for me, we need to begin to look at ways to solve our problem, and one of those ways is to use technology to fight oil theft, not by giving one person the contract to begin to guide all the pipeline and again when you give it in in, in delta state you give on that militants in niger in uh, in Baesa, will you give on that militants in river state already uh, um, uh sorry the kubo is already uh, causing his stir with his own that the pipeline is area should not be brought brought i mean should not be guided by government tompolo so we have a big issue at hand but uh, i think the challenge we have with nigerian government thus far is the government always look for a quick um, solution to challenges instead of looking at a long term solution and taking their time to find these solutions. Yeah, I mean, this, this is just the last one. Uh, we're looking at, you know, the relationship with OPEC and Nigeria here, being that we're part of uh, OPEC. Uh, it's also been reported that, you know, the organization of petroleum exporting countries and its allied had raised Nigeria's oil production quota uh, to 100 and eight, 1.830 million barrels per day, that's in September, from 1.826 million barrels per day, uh, which was in August. Do you think that this is actually really a help for us with the fact that we struggle? And do you think that Nigeria will be able to meet you know, this increased quota? <laughs> I see you smiling there. I mean, if you can, if you are doing about 900,000 900, 900, as for the last time, and you are being raised to about one point, how do you meet it when you've not tackled the challenge that is there? OPEC know the challenge that we are going through. They know, and again, this challenge also can also be held by the international committee because this oil, this oil that are being, this crude oil that are being stored by, in our waters are being sold into the international community. And there are people that are ready by that are on the high sea. How is OPEC going to help us? It shouldn't just be a Nigerian problem alone because, again, when you look at this, uh, the, 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 the quantity of those oil being stolen from Nigeria, that also increased the supply. And also at the long run, may, I, I, I may, may affect the price of all OPEC countries. So it's not just a Nigerian problem. I think OPEC also should look at it. increasing our number of um, output does not solve our problem because the critical fundamental problem, which is oil theft, have not been solved yet. So we can we, we only just dance around the bush, but we will not make any significant progress. I thought OPEC would be saying we, we have a technology, we have a way to help you people. We are going to form make sure that um, all stolen crude are not bought in the international market. I think that is the way we need OPEC. We are not by increasing our output because at the stance now Nigeria is going to a very challenging period not because we cannot produce but because majority of what we produce have been thiefed I mean uh, have been stolen not just in the in Nigeria in the high seas so they need to do something and the security apparatus the government need to find the political way I know it's an election year and governance are taking the back seat but this is critical to the to the survival of Nigerian economy. We need to do something fast. And we need OPEC to help us, not just by increasing our output, and to help us fight this oil theft, especially in the waters. Well, that, that's so much we can take now. It's been, you know, great speaking with you this morning on this particular issue. Thank you so much, Mohamed Muktak, for being part of the show. It's a pleasure. Good morning again. Well, uh, Mohamed Muktak is a developmental economist, and we have been uh, talking about uh, OPEC and its funding, plus the fact that you know our quota has been increased. It should have been a plus for us, but of course we have other issues that we're grappling with. That's the size of our conversation. If you missed out on every part of it, it would be okay to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Live. So many thanks for watching. I am Messi Popo.